Hey everybody, it's time to model some expressions. We're going to be using sculpt mode to do our expressions. Yay! There are a couple of issues with this. Let's go over them. So one of the first issues is that if we try to move things, you can see that our eyebrows and our eyelashes don't move. That's because they're a different object and we're doing a mesh edit rather than a bone edit. If you're doing a bone edit, this isn't going to be an issue if you're doing all bone, bone facial expressions. But for us, it is an issue, so we'll select them, then select the head, and then hit Control J, and they'll all merge together, and we won't look nearly as creepy because the materials will fix themselves too. How nice is that? So then what we're going to be able to do is reshape the face with the eyebrows still attached, but the eyes are distorting really creepy. We're going to want to fix that. So we're going to use this mask brush and we're going to paint a mask. And uh, let me just show you. Hmm. I don't see a mask. Do you see a mask? Well, Blender sees a mask. So what's going on here? There are actually a lot of things going on here. This is one of those mysteries and secrets of Blender that nobody bothers to tell you about. And if you try and search for mask not showing up, you get nothing. So there are actually two reasons it's not showing up. The first was relatively easy to work out. It doesn't like working with materials, so you need to switch over into solid, or if you'd prefer, you can switch over into matte cap. Either one would work, but you can see it's not working for us. We still can't see that particular spot. It's not highlighted at all. So what's going on? This is apparently never mentioned by anyone on the internet ever. This is the secret. Armatures make your masks invisible. No reason, just just because, you know, as you might expect, the masks work fine when you're not in armature mode, but you can't see them. I don't know why this is, and it was super, super hard to figure it out. Uh, but now that we know that, we can use the mask properly. So I'll teach you what we're going to do. In order to mask the eyes, we're just going to go ahead and paint them. But we're going to want to paint them pretty close to black. So let's up our strength. Now I'm real zoomed in at the moment, and I'm hitting the back of the head a little bit. But that's fine. We're not going to be uh, uh, shaping the back of our head at all. So. The key here is that we actually need to get the inside of the eyes. You see this part here? So this painting isn't going to be quite enough. Let's just increase the radius, or you could zoom out, both work, and try again. There we are. That looks pretty good. Just catch the corners, just in case. There we are. The inside of the eye is definitely the part that we want to move the least. And now what we can do is we can use the blur function which I believe you can either select or you can hold down shift. See? So we'll go hold down shift and just gently blur out the edges here. Now we may have to modify this again later, but this mascara should make it so that we can reshape our face without having any serious problems with the eyes drifting along with the rest of the head. See? Much more realistic. Uh, you could bring this down um, from a 100% mask to something a little bit lower. It's up to you. Play around with it all you'd like. But we're going to go ahead and turn on our armature again and go back into materials mode because we don't have to see the mask. As long as it works, we're happy. And I much prefer to shape a character where I can see how the light hits their face and I can see how it's deforming. Uh, although, to be honest, matte cap is pretty nice. So we're going to go ahead and start with the expressions. The first expression we are making is a smile but our shape keys are gone. Hmm, I must not have created them in this version. This is a second take. We can't just modify the base mesh because then we would be stuck in our one specific expression and that would be even creepier than not having an expression. So we'll create some shape keys and this first, this first non-basis one we'll call smile. Now if we go over into sculpt mode and try and sculpt it, nothing's happening. But we saw that sculpt mode worked fine. What is it? Well, Sculpt mode, unlike edit mode, does not automatically peg this at 1. So you've got to actually manually raise it to 1, and then it'll work. See? So what sort of expression are you going to get when you smile? Well, we want to raise our eyebrows a little bit, like uh, like this. Maybe something like this. No, not like that. Like this. Maybe something like that. Uh, and we wanted to bring in our mouth. Like, yeah, that's super creepy, right? 
So this is something that takes a lot of getting used to and a lot of doing. What what makes the smiles look creepy? What makes them look natural? What makes them look unnatural? Um, and it's definitely something where if you wanted to have a good expression, you probably should go and search for it on the internet. Uh, Google searches can give you some nice um, uh, results. They can they can bring you some people who actually look like they're uh, having a good expression on their face and are not super creepy. One of the keys to a super not creepy smile is to pull back the lips. Now this smile is always going to be a little bit creepy because we're not moving the eyelids at all and naturally when someone smiles you're going to end up bringing the eyelids uh, up a little bit but you can see that our mask isn't letting us do that. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to either uh, take the mask down or just swap into edit mode briefly and just grab the same vert on both eyes um, it might be difficult to do depending on yeah, yeah it's super difficult that'll do it's okay if it's not symmetrical and then we can drag it up but you can see that we're gonna need to turn on connected proportional editing and drag it up to real shrink it down there we are uh, connected is not what we want because our eyelashes are not technically connected so just enable it there we are that'll do um, now remember that this is gonna look a little bit creepy here in blender but that's okay now the other thing we want to do is make these lips peel back a little bit most people do not smile closed mouth closed mouth uh, if you're going to do a closed mouth smile it had better be a very gentle one and uh, I'm not known for my tremendously gentle smiles, so let's go ahead and open our mouth first. Oh. Come on. There we go. Pose mode. And just open our mouth. Rotate X and there we go. This is important because it will allow us to sculpt without sculpting both the top and bottom lip at the same time. We can grab them separately. And that's a good thing for because we're going to try and move the upper lip up and the lower lip down. And you don't have to use just brush, uh, just the one brush. There are lots of brushes in our repertoire. And I'm actually doing this without, I'm just doing this with a pure mouse, and that's actually not the best way to do it. Um, if you can use a tablet, a tablet is better. However, right now my tablet is difficult to use at the same time as my mic, so... You notice that I went and tweaked the um, the edge of the mouth so that the upper lip was a little bit higher up and the lower lip was a little bit higher up. That's because when the mouth was closed, we had a situation that didn't look real very very realistic. Now Alt R will bring that back, and we have a, a smile that is starting to look a little bit, you know, murdery. Um, so we can keep tweaking and try and get it to look a little bit less like uh, we're going to bite someone's head off in a literal sense. So, just pull this lip back. Oop. And pull this up. No. Nope. Sorry, I tried to grab and rotate. I forgot that rotating isn't one of these default brushes. Ah, oh, there it is. Twist. So one of the things that you'll notice is that we're having a hard time getting a good soft edge to this smile. That's partially because this grab brush is not very well configured. So let's go ahead and configure it. We'll bring our strength down, but we also want to bring our um, curve. So something more like this is, is more natural for a facial expression. So we'll just live with it like that, and we can grab it here and get ourselves a... Uh, Oh, murder face. Murder face. It's like 50-50. Sometimes you get a real nice expression, and sometimes you get a serious case of the murder face.
Super creepy, right? Well, what happens when we drop the shape key down? You can see that at 40% it looks pretty neutral, and at 60% it barely, or 70%, it barely looks creepy at all. So that's what I was talking about earlier. It's okay to push the expression to a clownish extreme as long as the actual substructure of the face can handle it. See, if, if I wanted to make an expression like this, I could. People would run away from me on the streets, but my face can physically hold that expression. And because of that, when we dial the expression back, we get a relatively nice smile. It's a very, very neutral, bland, and uninteresting smile. And that's kind of the point. We're going to be mixing and matching a bunch of different emotions, and we're going to be blending in and out of them uh, at a very um, natural pace. So if you freeze frame any given person's facial expression, you're probably going to think it looks pretty dumb. But we're going to have to live with that. Um, and, uh, and we're going to have to use that to our advantage. The human eye isn't going to think that this is creepy because it's going to be half blended with another expression. What, uh, what other expressions should we make? Let's try... Um, let's try a hrmph. And for the hrmph, we're going to turn off the symmetry. Oh, forgot to tweak. There we go. Yeah, that's good. So for the home, we're going to go ahead and just make my whole face go over to this direction. And once again, we'll swap into edit mode just to pull up this eye a little bit to give it a little bit of a natural feel. And we're going to go ahead and bring this eyebrow down and this eyebrow up. Yeah, that'll work okay. And uh, no, let's go bring out that twist brush again. Twist. Yep, oh, too much twist. We're no longer in paint mode for some reason. That was odd. Twist mode. There we go. Grab mode, bring it up. Now the lips are a little bit unnatural because they aren't thinned at all by being stretched, so we're just going to thin them a little bit. There's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, one way to do it is to use the pinch brush, which I didn't do last time. Last time I used uh, grab and smooth, which is also a good way to do it. pinch brush when your mouth is closed is a little bit risky because you can catch the other lip but it does give you know a relatively nice um, sharp look to your to your lips which is what you're gonna have when you're tightening them and you can continue to use smooth or scrape or nudge or whatever it is you want to use to try and make your face look a little bit more natural nudge is actually a really nice brush it can give you some good results um, as compared to grab which can sometimes really uh, end up dragging you into the weeds. So make sure that you take a look at your face from a couple of different angles because it's easy for you to accidentally pull out a cheek or something similar and end up with something that looks really unnatural. So here we're going to push in the mouth and pull out the cheek to try and give us a little bit of that bunching that you get when you're, when you well, we could just use an inflate brush. Yeah, there we are. And now we're going to go back to the pinch brush and just tighten this area up a little bit. There you go. Uh, I really do recommend playing around with all of this and just doing whatever you think would look cool. I think I accidentally undid some of my work um, with the eyebrows. Uh, if, if not, I didn't really make them very aggressive, so let's try that again here. There you go. So there's my hrmph. So when you bring the hrmph down, you get kind of a quizzical look. And when you combine it with the smile, 
you get kind of uh, an off kilter smile. And you can see how phasing in and out of these can change your expression on the fly. And that's going to be the heart of what we're going to do. Let's do one more facial expression, and then we will, in the next episode, hook it all together. I hope you've understood. Uh, this is like 15 minutes of me just talking about facial expressions and live modeling it. But I thought it was important for you to see how I would put together these facial expressions. I didn't want to just say, go do it, and have you get upset. Um, so the last one we'll do is going to be uh, a... Mm, So the mm, we're going to leave our um, symmetry off, and we're going to go in the opposite direction, and we're going to purse our lips out like this. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't look perfect. Bring in our cheeks a little bit. And then you just go. Whoop. Now, I do want to fix these lips up just a touch, um, but it's going to be hard to do while they're touching, so we'll just rotate X, drag it open, and uh, try and fix up the lips here in open mouth mode. Remembering that I do not have. Excuse me, I do not have symmetry on, so I need to be a little bit careful about that. And now let's Alt-R to close it. And we can use some pinch. Let's use some pinch. I'll just use some pinch right here and right here. Hmm. Grab that deflush, def, deflate brush. It's the inflate brush. I'm going to hold. Is it shift? No, it's it's not shift. It's alt. Alt. Or is it right click? I just undid stuff I didn't want to undo. Damn it. It's amazing how much your muscle memory takes. It's, it's all muscle memory. And once you have to try and describe what you're doing, it's like, wait, is it alt, shift, Q? Yeah, I screwed it up. Um, I just got to click deflate. <laughs> And then you can just deflate this area a little bit to bring it out and make it look like you're pursing your lips properly. And we'll just inflate this area a little bit. And then back to deflate, because I got a little bit excited. There we are. So now if we look at that, we got a fairly uh, small facial expression. This isn't, this isn't something that people are going to be like, oh my god, he's an evil clown. When someone goes like this, they're just like, you're just like why is he making that face? It's weird. But if you bring it down, it's just a little bit of lip tightening and a little bit of eyebrow crowding. And if you combine it, you can get a variety of facial expressions relatively easy. Now, you may not think that this is going to turn out very well. We will find out in the next episode where I put together an animator and we try it. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if it'll turn out very well, but uh, I've done this a couple of times, and it's always turned out well in the past. Uh, performing on camera is always a more harrowing experience, especially trying to come in under the 20-minute mark, which I just barely managed to do. So in the next episode, we'll put together an animator. We're not going to be using stock. You're not going to be using a, a mechanism. We're not going to be using any kind of animations proper. We're going to be doing it using a program. Uh, and I'll explain why in the next episode.